Our newest 5-star Dendro Sword character, I'll Hate Them, is the prime specimen, a man of focus, commitment, and sheer will. Primarily on field, I'll Hate Them focuses on combining excellent DPS output while also being a driver for Dendro-related reactions. His playstyle is a little involved in almost like a game. I'll explain exactly what happens and how to optimize for maximum rotational DPS. YouTube Frogs, this guide is coming out later than usual since I just got back from Japan and started playing around with I'll Hate Them two days after its release on my stream, link in the description if you want to check it out. And so, this guide is going to assume you know the basics from him, so I can get right into the most important details for his gameplay. We'll be covering his talents, optimizing his attack rotation, optimal weapons and artifacts, where his constellations lie, optimal team building, and a gameplay showcase. Let's begin. <laughs> From Constellation 0 to Constellation 6, I'll Hate Them's focus is a Dendro-infused on-field DPS. His playstyle can be abused in either a spread aggravate or a hyperbloom composition, as they both utilize his on-field multipliers and his ability to constantly apply Dendro with his infusion. The focus of his kit centers around his elemental skill. It is primarily responsible for his mirror generation and holds the multiplier that scales dendro damage on both attack percent and elemental mastery. As an on-field DPS, his normal charge attack is also relatively useful. While they are only attack percent multipliers and their scalings aren't the best, they are still used all the time and should still be invested in. His burst is actually interesting and serves mainly as a rotation starter to generate his mirrors rather than a huge nuke that deals tons of damage. It seems counterintuitive at the start, but as you play around with the whole kit, it makes a lot more sense in the big picture. Let's dive into some necessary details. Elemental Skill. This is I'll Hate Them's highest priority talent investment because it's responsible for his projection attack damage that happens every 1.6 seconds and deals a number of attacks based on his mirror count at the time. Each mirror does last for 4 seconds, decreasing by 1. Either tap or hold works, but hold forces I'll Hate Them into the air, leading to an immediate punch attack, potentially activating his A1 passive earlier than you'd like. His A1 passive allows one mirror to be generated on a charge or plunge attack, but only once every 12 seconds. As long as he has a mirror, his attacks are dendro-infused. In every 1.6 seconds, a projection attack, independent of his normal attacks, deals 1-3 to three instances of damage depending on 1-3 to three mirrors. Each time a projection attack hits, one dendro particle is also generated. There is no hard cap on this, so as long as he maintains projection attacks up, he will constantly generate energy. His multipliers here are quite nice, and primarily scale on the Elemental Mastery. Combined with his Ascension 4 passive, Elemental Mastery is his main scaling stat that benefits the important portions of his damage output on here for the additional damage bonus bonus, as well as the main multiplier. His elemental skill in total has an 18 second cooldown, but with the combination of his ascension 1 passive and his burst, mirror uptime is essentially 100%. Normal Charge Attack So this is all hate them's second priority talent investment because they are used 90% of the time during his rotation when he has Mirrors and Dendro Infusion. Without them, projection attacks will not occur. His old attack sequence is pretty smooth and they are all dash cancelable, making in combat improvised rotations not punishing. Elemental Burst, Alhatham's second or third priority talent investment, however you want to think about it, because his burst is mainly used to generate mirrors to start his rotation, not responsible for the bulk of his damage. So if he activates his burst with zero mirrors, it will deal 4 instances of damage and after 2 seconds generate 3 mirrors. If you activate it with 3 mirrors, they will all be consumed and then it will deal 10 instances of damage, but then 0 will be generated leaving all Hatham needing to use his elemental skill to continue his on-field rotation. Both his burst and his elemental skill are on this 18 second cooldown, so ideally they could be combined for his holistic rotation. So then, as explained, talent investment is elemental skill greater than normal charge attack greater than equal to burst. Optimal attack rotation. So this technically two, but one is a lot more optimal and aims for max duration on his three mirror protection attacks, which deals a significant portion of his total damage. So for his zero mirror burst rotation, we have burst into a two second delay, into three mirrors normal attack spam, into elemental skill or charge attack, into normal attack spam, into charge attack or elemental skill, whichever wasn't used before, and then you normal attack a spam for 12 seconds or until you're satisfied and repeat. This rotation is 12 seconds of 3 mirror uptime, 8 procs of 3 mirror attacks, and a total of a 20 to 22 second rotation 100% uptime. The 2 second delay that occurs right after the burst is possible to swap in between here to another character and use like their skill or something, but it does require like relatively low ping because the window of opportunity here is very small. I was able to do it at 79 ping by switching to Bennett and activating elemental skill, but in general, you may or may not be able to do that. You might have to stand all hate them for his three mirrors to generate. 
And then there's the three mirror burst rotation, which is significantly shorter and aims to front load his damage and put him completely on cooldown. So this is an elemental skill plus a charge plunge to immediately activate the three mirrors. And then you normal attack spam for about two and a half seconds or until you see the second proc of the mirror attack. Then you cast your elemental burst while you still have three mirrors for maximum damage. This rotation is only used at the ends of abyss floors where you can go all out in most situations. Optimal weapons. So after going over Ahitham's kit, a majority of his damage comes from his mirror uptime and projection attacks, and then secondarily from all of his normal attacks. Projection attacks count as elemental skill based damage, so we're mainly focusing on elemental skill based damage, normal attack damage, and as much crit, dender damage, and general damage bonuses as possible. While there are a lot of weapons that can work, I'm going to be focusing on the best ones. 5 star Light of Fuller Incision, best in slot signature weapon. No doubt with a massive crit damage, solid base attack, extra crit rate, and an elemental mastery conversion to his normal attack and elemental skill damage. The only pillar of damage that this weapon doesn't provide is Dendro damage bonus. Then we have any of the crit based 5 star weapons. We have Mist Splitter, we have Jade Cutter, and then we have Aran Gapaku Futsu. Every single one is insane for all hate them, with Jade Cutter coming out on top just because it provides the highest source of crit, and base attack matters much less. Also does his matches green appeal if you're looking for aesthetic points. We also have 5 star Freedom Sworn. If you happen to have it lying around and not using it on Kazawa because you're a Xyphos Moonlight Gamer, this Elemental Mastery Sword is a pretty solid option behind the crit 5 stars, providing increased damage bonus and an extra normal charge plunging attack damage along with some attack percent. So after that, we get into a plethora of 4 star weapons. Unironically, the strongest personal 4 star weapon for DPS is the recently released Shigure. Elemental Mastery Secondary Stat, 32% general damage bonus for a single target. Not a fan of the aesthetics though. My personal favorite 4 star is the previously mentioned Xyphos Moonlight, which not only provides elemental mastery and then converts that into recharge, but it looks insanely good on him. It's literally perfect, better than I would say his signature weapon. Otherwise, any other force that provides elemental mastery is a staple choice that isn't super strong but gets the job done. We have stuff like Iron Sting and then Sapwood Blade, etc. For crit based weapons, I'd only recommend the 4 star Black Sword from this roster. The crit and added normal charge bonus damage benefits him more so than your standard stat stick like the Black Cliff, which I wouldn't really recommend. For energy recharge based weapons, I'd only recommend the Festering Desire due to its elemental skill based passive even though it's an energy recharge based weapon, otherwise you're sacrificing too much offensive TPS to guarantee a burst every rotation from other recharge weapons. For my budget players that don't have a 5 star to use, I'd expect your all hate them to run the Iron Sting. The passive actually works out for him to increase all parts of his damage. Now for artifacts and stat priority. From Constellation 0 to Constellation 6, his scaling is built upon attack and elemental mastery in his multipliers that you can see here, which are both affected by crit and general damage bonuses. So we want to prioritize crit rate and crit damage for highest efficiency, then elemental skill, dendro or additional damage bonuses, and then elemental mastery for reaction A4 passive benefits, and then finally energy recharge and attack percent. So our best 4-piece artifact set choice is undoubtedly the 4-piece Guild of Dreams. It provides the highest source of combined elemental mastery and attack, but does require a 4-piece Deepwood user on the team or to decrease the dender resistance of the enemies. If you don't have a super solid 4-piece Gilded, don't worry. A lot of our 2-piece 2-piece combos are pretty close to the overall stat layout of Gilded, just in less value. So any 2-piece Elemental Mastery set, we have Wanderer, we have Gilded, and then we have the new Flower of Paradise set. We also have 2-piece Deepwood, which is just Dendro 15%. And then we have 2-piece Attack% percent, which we have like a billion of. And then we have Energy Recharge 20% from the Emblem set. Depending on your specific conditions, you may find that 2-piece Emblem for 20% Recharge to be highly valuable for your rotation, allowing Al Haytham to comfortably burst every rotation on top of your team's Favonius generation. Otherwise, I really wouldn't focus on Energy Recharge for the main stat choices because you're sacrificing way too much offense. Then we get to main stat choices. He is a standard elemental mastery based DPS, probably the easiest part of his guide. Elemental mastery over attack percent on his timepiece, elemental mastery is a lot more efficient. Dendro damage goblet and a crit based mask. It's a super textbook layout, don't think too hard about it. If you're running him on a signature weapon, I'd better see you optimize for 85 to 90% crit rate before stacking his crit damage beyond absurd levels. Me personally, I didn't do that great of a job here. You can see mine 70 crit, 240 crit damage. I need to farm more crit rate consistent pieces for his general build. Alright, baseline build with weapons and artifacts is complete, so here's my recommendation of stat thresholds. So since Alhatham has a Dendro damage ascension bonus, his crit isn't going to be inflated like what you may be used to, which means a solid crit ratio may be more difficult. So if you're using a crit weapon, 
80 to 95% crit rate, 160 to 250% crit damage, and about 200 to 300 elemental mastery. If you're using an elemental mastery weapon, 75 crit rate, 150 crit damage, and about 400 to 500 elemental mastery. Any amount of attack is fine, and recharge 120% plus, but 130 to 140 for average comfort. I'm giving ranges for certain stats to give variance on different weapons. That being said, ascending him to 90 is worth it to gain base reaction damage and dendro damage ascension bonus. Constellations. So at Constellation 0, Alhatham is already a powerhouse. He's super solid DPS output, an engaging playstyle, he's easy to build around, and he looks good doing it. There's absolutely no need for Constellations on him, and in fact, usually the front-loaded Constellations, which is 1 to 3, can significantly change a character, but for Alhatham, they don't impact him that much. So in my opinion, I would say that Alhatham is a Constellation 0 or an all-out Constellation 6 character, nothing really in between. Either he does the job at Constellation 0, or you get him at C6, so all of his other Constellations actually makes sense and he deletes everything. Constellation 1. Every time a projection attack hits an opponent, elemental skill cooldown decreases by 1.2 seconds. This is once per one second. I find this strange that it's once per one second because his projection attack interval is 1.6 seconds. So I'm guessing that based off of the wording, which is when a projection attack, not just his own, maybe multiple Alhathams in co-op would affect this. So if like multiple C1 Alhathams, they can collectively decrease his elemental skill faster than usual. Not multiple C1s, by the way, just one C1 like yours and then, you know, three other C0s. They can maybe collectively decrease his E faster than usual, more than once per 1.6, but maybe once per like 1.1 or some shit. Constellation 2. Alhatham gains up to 200 elemental mastery for 8 seconds, refreshable even at max mirrors. Basically, that's all of this text. C3, C5 is plus 2 levels to elemental skill and burst. Constellation 4. His burst grants effects based on the mirrors consumed and generated. For every consumed mirror, 30 elemental mastery for other party members, not himself, which means max 90, because if he consumes 3, then he gives 90. Other side, for every generated mirror, Alhatham himself gains 10% gender damage bonus, max 30% if he generates 3 mirrors when he consumes 0, etc. Constellation 6. So there's two parts to this. First part, his burst generates plus 3 mirrors on top of the original 0 to 3. Essentially, it's creating 3 to 6 mirrors, even though it only shows 3, which we'll get to in number 2. If he over generates mirrors, so like, 4, 5, 6, you'll gain 10% crit rate and 70% crit damage for 6 seconds. So his 0 to 2 mirror burst will grant the crit bonus since he's generating 6 to 4 new mirrors. Combine this with his constellation 1, this slightly alters his playstyle. So instead of the original, you lead with a 0 mirror Q and then your 2 seconds delay and then you normal attack spam while you have 3 mirrors and then use your elemental skill or your charge attack to maintain those 3 mirrors and normal attack in between. You can instead lead with your elemental skill, normal attack for a little bit, to maintain two mirrors and then right before the two mirrors expires use your q which generates four mirrors then you'll gain the crit bonus you see where i'm going with this and then while this is happening you have projections decreasing his elemental skill cooldown so it'll be up in time for the second time you do it because the original combo has two uses of elemental skill or charge attack. You'll charge attack first with C6, so then his E comes back for the second rotation, and you can repeat the cycle. Anyways, yeah. Okay, cool. Pog. This is only possible because the projection attacks constantly reduce his elemental skill cooldown, and very quickly it will be under 12 seconds. So cycling this with his ascension one passive, which is also a 12 second cooldown, and rotating with his burst, which also generates mirrors, you can essentially maintain this crit buff permanently as long as you do it properly. Not actually, theoretically, but like hypothetically, you should be able to maintain it properly. If not all the time, it'll be up fairly often. Okay, cool. Team comp. So here's the thing about all hate them. He has almost 100% Dendro infusion uptime. His own personal damage is pretty up there with all the consistent projection attacks, and all of this happens only when he's on field. So as a Dendro character, this enables him to coexist pretty well on both spread aggravate compositions, and also as a standalone driver for Bloom-related comps. So essentially, he can be anywhere that Dendro would be with one universal build, you don't need to change his build for these two different situations. First up, spread. This is his strongest team for his own personal damage. You usually have one Electro, and you usually have two Flex slots. The most common will be a second Dendro slot here for the Elemental Resonance, granting additional Elemental Mastery with Zhongli or Anemo. So all Haytham holds Gilded set here, the Electro will most commonly be Fischl or Cookie, and then the second Dendro will hold the Deepwood, 
and either be Yao Yao for heal or Nahida, DMC, or Kale. Energy will be a little tight for this team, so Favonius is preferable on any supportive unit, for example, like Yao Yao. Fischl generates solid energy just by existing, so she can be built as the second Aggravate DPS. Then we get to Hyper Bloom. It's a strong, low investment single target team. You have Alhatham, you have one Hydro, you have the Elemental Mastery Electro, and then you have a Flex slot. Hydro is usually Xing Chiu for Interruption Resist and or Yelan for passive on-field increase to Alhatham via her Dice Passive. The Electro will usually be Elemental Mastery. It'll be either a Cookie or Raiden. And then the Flex slot can be Beidou for double Electro since Beidou does not impact the Hyper Bloom procs. Yao Yao or Nahida for double Dendro. Or you can run both Xing Chiu and Yelan for double Hydro. Or you can run Zhongli for Jade Shield Resist Reduction, etc. Then we get to Nilu Bloom. Very strong AoE team, very high self damage. I'll hate them plus Nilu and either triple Hydro, so two more Hydro here, or double Dendro, one Dendro, and one Hydro. So I'll hate them will be on field for this. So you'll be taking the brunt of the self damage and also be inflicting all of the blooms most of the time. In double Dendro, I would say Yaya is required for healing. For triple Dendro, I would say at least Kakomi is required. In this particular team comp, Super Blooms created by I'll hate them won't be as strong because he's not built on triple EM, but that's okay because his damage kind of sort of kind of makes up for it not really but it's fun cool all right miscellaneous teams so you can honestly just have fun with alhatham and whatever off-field supports you want to try out alhatham plus overvape like hydro electro pyro is totally possible or you can stick alhatham into the international comp and bring forward the lovely kazua the shing Cho, and the bennett and call it like inter educational grational whatever the f dude i don't know man i've heard intergrational i've heard educational please just can we can we stop with these names holy crap anyways Okay, yes, showcase time, yay, hoo-hoo. So here's Spread All Hatham and Hyper Bloom All Hatham, the two most common team comps you'll see with him. He's Constellation Zero, he's level 80, level six talents, four piece gilded, light of foliar incision at R180. Give the music, Mr. Cope. And that concludes a super concise full guide. All Haytham is literally who she doesn't want you to know about. He's smart, tall, built, and is always on top of things and probably knows how to cook even if we haven't seen him yet. Means aside, 
I love this character. He's a powerhouse at Constellation Zero, and I can't wait to unleash his Constellation 6. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.